Kimbo Pride. And we are here to talk about the challenges faced by LGBTQ and not only the aspect in workplace, but family and social as well. So we have the 10 team members, Dr. Anjali, Arana, Shweta, Shraddha, and Swati. And for the first slide, I may call Shweta here, handing over. Thanks, Dr. Anugriti. Very good evening to everyone. Uh, so just getting charged from presentation one. Mm -hmm. uh, my team will talk about the uh, topic more on the part of challenges. I'll uh, just take a few minutes to explain what uh, this LGBTQ actually talks about. Uh, so since childhood, we learned about uh, the gender, male, female, Hindi, we have thrilling, pulling, doling. Hote hai. But now as uh, we are more uh, working or talking about the diversity, so we uh, got to know about like apart from male and female, there are a few more uh, you know gender orientation which we have in our society and uh, we should be like very okay with it and we should accept it as we accept the uh, male and female in the society. So beginning uh, from what it is, it's like LGBT, uh, this is an umbrella which, uh, you know, constitutes a, a rainbow because it has all colors. So let's uh, quickly explain word by word. L stain, uh, uh, stands for the lesbians. So a, a person who has interest in women. So women interest for the women as a sexually uh, uh, requirements. Then G stands for gay, where men is interested in uh, men. Uh, B stat, uh, states, uh, stands for bisexual. Bisexuals are those who are inclined, who can be inclined towards male, female, or either genders. Then uh, trans, trans are uh, like a people uh, took birth as in maybe female, uh, but when as soon as that person grows, uh, uh, that person start adapting uh, the uh, you know culture of, uh, or the uh, the uh, gesture which a male has. So uh, women has. So in that case, they can call it as a trans women or trans men. So this is how it is. Then Q, Q stands for the queer. So this entire, this uh, group of people, we call it as a queer also. Uh, then uh, we also have few other uh, category that includes intersex uh, this uh, which i uh, understood about with this is like uh, these sort of people do not have a defined sex then in that case there is some surgery going on and then uh, you know uh, like uh, we define their sexes asexuals are like maybe no or very less inclined towards the um, you know uh, uh, sexual requirements and plus sign is used like if on if apart from these uh, categorization if we have some other categories also available as a part of uh, this uh, uh, community so uh, this is what a small explanation so uh, as i told uh, you like my team will uh, will talk more about uh, the challenges they face within the society or in the workplace or at the community uh, i just would like to add two three things like uh, uh, we are uh, in process and much more awareness and sensitization is required for them so that at least they could uh, could align with uh, you know basic necessity what uh, they should get like a job or uh, you know participation in the uh, other activities like other people do and they shouldn't be a uh, look as like acha ye to gay hai acha ye to wo hai is tarike se they shouldn't be anything so this is what uh, at my part of presentation thank you Dr. Anukriti, please. Yeah, so hello everyone. And we will be discussing the social barriers which these people face every day at workplace. So as we know, <clears throat> their freedom of expression is limited even in the society and the workplace. Now, we hear the remarks such as men don't do makeup, right? Men don't wear skirts. Okay, and we say, Tu aurat ban ke ghumega? Such dress codes are applied in places still today. And so we know our concrete thinking is a bias in this matter. We all know our system is inherently based on patriarchal thinking, where we are gender conditioned to believe this is men, this is women, and nothing exists in between. But it is not a black and white spectrum. As we know, this thinking specifically excludes LGBTQ community. And now we know that gender oppression, stigma, and the general taboo around LGBTQ, literally their life choices causes so many troubles to them and hampers their work potential. And such confrontation 
causes deep rooted anxiety in these people because of the homophobic behavior towards them by the employers by the employees or the work colleagues bullyism sexism cat calling homophobic behavior this all affects their mental health very badly the futile efforts to mingle with other colleagues they feel really isolated in their workplace being attacked with remarks like a chikne mard a bhi macho or if i may say there is a song aadmi hu aadmi se pyar karta hu which is literally harmless but in such cases it they can feel attacked this leads to missing out on meetings and social hangouts due to all these challenges depression is inevitable alcohol cannabis and tobacco use is on the rise in uh, use as we say this all leads to procrastination loss of work potential social withdrawal less opportunities less chances for promotions and even joblessness sometimes the tenants ask uh, the landlords ask the tenants to even vacate homes because of their sexual preferences or the way they conduct themselves in public we know suicide is also on the rise and now finding the courage to ask why am i not included why am i not heard why am i cornered and ignored this is really hard subjected to abuse both verbal physical or any kind their psychological mental health is beyond our comprehension as we know hard uh, it's hard for such people to reach to help and to whom to confide in and what are their legal legal procedures they can follow here we know as the rising discrepancies in how society treats lgbtq and the not lgbtq community as we know they are subjected to hatred and even violence sometimes the psychological trauma is great now in this century where we talk about human rights these people are human and we should consider the right to equality the right to express themselves and to attain highest form of physical and mental health for people and we know the often lgbtq community is still a minority in workplace let's make a gender fluid a safer environment where everybody can express themselves as they want and with this i conclude my slide and hand over to uh, dr anjali uh thank you uh, my self shraddha and my part is legal so we'll move forward <laughs> jab pe uh, legal landscape lgbtq people is constantly evolving how legal rights establishment is making impact we'll see in 1860 section 377 was considered homosexuality as a criminal offense in 2009 decriminalized and struck down by the delhi high court in july in 2013 supreme court overturned this but by the way in this particular period kahin na kahin hamare aas paas humne dekha hai ki होमोसेक्शुअल या फिर बाइसेक्शुअल पीपल को कितना हमने नुकसान पहुंचाया है बाय अवर वर्बल और नॉन वर्बल स्टेटमेंट 2017 सुप्रीम कोर्ट स्टेट्स दैट प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ सेक्सुअल ओरिएंटेशन लाइज एट द कोर ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स इन 2019 ट्रांसजेंडर पर्सन प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ राइट रिकॉग्नाइज द राइट टू सेल्फ परसीव जेंडर आइडेंटिटी यू कैन मेंशन नाउ इन एनी फॉर्म मेल फीमेल and a third gender proudly in other countries we can say there are transgender legal defense and education fund also which is committed to ending discrimination based upon a gender identity and expression to achieving equality of transgender people through public education and yes we are looking for more such evolving statement by government and indian penal court over to anjali uh thank you very much i am anjali and i'll take it forward bringing across the family challenges that are faced by the lgbtq community most of us here in this group are parents and we are very well aware of the importance of parents in the life of a child or a youth a child who is attached to and cared for by the parents is able to regulate their emotions explore the environment become self reliant in an age appropriate manner we also know that the vast majority of the sexual minority youth are born to heterosexual parents most parents come 
commonly possess some kind of an implicit or an explicit negative attitude towards homosexuality, transgenders or gender non-conforming youth. And they expect the children to be heterosexual like themselves. This problem is more so in the case of transgenders. Supposing there is a person who's born and given a gender of a girl and behaves like a boy actually, is, the gender is actually a boy, it's quite common to call them a tomboy and to some extent it is acceptable in society. But think of the other way around. When a person is given sex at birth of a boy, but the actual gender is a girl, that person is troubled right from childhood. Do not wear this, do not play like this, do not sit like this. This is what we have all experienced. It is because of these familial expectations that many of the LGBTQ youth hesitate in coming out in the open with their sexuality. The thoughts they commonly face, what they think usually is, I am afraid of my parents will not love me if I come out. I have been lying to myself that I am straight. I don't think I am. I am afraid to come out. What if, what if I am wrong? I am afraid of coming out because my family uses gay as a really bad insult. This is something we've all seen in our own experiences. The fear of coming out makes them hide their feelings and preferences. They frequently cannot acknowledge to themselves, leave alone to the others, that what are their attractions, what are their fantasies. Their homosexuality is so unacceptable that it must be kept out of any conscious awareness. The burden of this unshared personal information and the associated shame with it leads to rejection, rejection, it leads to mental stress and trauma. And when they do decide to come out and disclose their preferences either to their parents or to their siblings, the chances are that many of them will not be accepted. The negative reaction from the parents can range from an anxious concern to abuse and sometimes even banishment from homes. LGBT youth who had disclosed their sexual orientation to family members, they were more likely to face verbal abuse physical abuse, and their parental rejection was associated with health risk behaviors, poor mental and physical health outcomes. And such sexual minority adults were more likely to suffer from depression, drug dependence, and more likely to even attempt suicide. A common solution which is adopted by parents, especially in our country, is that recently there was a case in Delhi where a doctor had committed suicide when she found out that her husband was gay. Her suicide note had indicated that she also faced harassment from her husband. I personally know a dentist, a friend of mine, who got married to a pilot. And uh, the person, the uh, husband was gay. She did not know about it. And for a good two to three years, she kept on facing mental torture and trauma because she was made to feel that she was unattractive. That is why the husband was not sexually towards her. It was believable that this husband made a pass at this dentist's brother that she got to know what the truth was. Ultimately, they got divorced. They moved on in their life. So why do men also agree for these kind of things? Men comply with the wishes of their family because of the fear of being disowned, sometimes even the fear of being disinherited. But such a forced marriage ultimately results in misery for all parties involved. In our previous uh, presentation, Janki has told us today that yesterday Supreme Court has asked the government for the response as to why we should not include same-sex marriages as a part of the Special Marriages Act. This is a great way forward and maybe the acceptance by family would go on. But the challenges for the LGBT community do not end with only family or social interactions. They continue at workplace too. And telling us more about this is Arna. Thank you, Anjali. Uh, before I go on to you know, talk about uh, challenges faced in the workplace, I would like to ask the team that did you get a sense of from you know, looking at the societal discrimination and the familial experiences that how the uh, LGBTQ life is so completely different from the non-LGBTQ life. Did you get a sense of that? Uh, that the kind of realities the LGBTQ person faces 
is, uh, you know, so much different from the non-LGBTQ persons. Uh, I'm not able to see any comment, but if you do feel absolutely, it, absolutely, you know, uh, free to, you know, to write about it here. Mm, so, you know, with that kind of discrimination and with those kinds of challenges, you can understand, uh, how, you know, can well imagine how the workplace uh, challenge is going to be. Now, the key outcome of all of these uh, challenges that uh, the, the LGBTQ person faces has been the conspicuous absence. You know, very few LGBTQ person actually works, the numbers show, that very few actually works with the in the Indian corporate. So there is this whole thing of exclusion, despite the you know World Bank having pointed out the economic cost of uh, you know the price that we are paying for this exclusion. Uh, the numbers haven't been growing very. It, the growth has not been very encouraging. Now, given that uh, those who are in the workplace, uh, they are. Uh, they would be, we can say, you know, we can categorize them under two heads. Those who are closeted, meaning those who have not come out and revealed their uh, uh, sexual orientation and those who have come out. Now, among those who have come out, the, you know, lots of research, you know, not a lot, some research has been done and the evidence show that they're constantly under the apprehension and pressure of, you know, being found out. What if I, I'm found out on my social media. What if I'm seen interacting with my LGBTQ friends who are open, you know? And then, you know, there was this gay friend of mine working in one INGO who said, you know, uh, people constantly ask me, why have you not married yet? Why don't you marry a nice girl? Or a lesbian person being asked that, uh, you know, uh, what does your husband do? So they're constantly cringing from these heteronormative comments that are being made and the questions that are being asked. So the a story from here is that, you know, more than focusing on the work and work outcomes, they are tensed about how they will be dealing with their sexual orientation. So that is the case of the closeted person. And for the person who has already come out, you know, Aparna has talked so much about conscious and unconscious biases. I think when we looked at the data over here and the evidence and the research, we found that the LGBTQ experience is rife in the workplace, is rife with conscious and unconscious biases. Because once they come out, they face this microaggression, they are judged, you know, there are some stereotypical assumptions and people suddenly become very quiet or they distance themselves from them. And, um, you know, even simple acts like uh, they want to put a hand around someone's shoulder is misinterpreted as a sexual overture, which may not be the case for, you know, the heterosexual person. And then, of course, there's this issue of coping with gossips and so on and so forth. There was a study done in 2016 and, uh, you know, by, uh, by Mingle, it was a Mingle survey. And guess what uh, they found in, in the Indian workplace? And they found that 40% actually said that they are reported being harassed. And two thirds, two out of three persons said that, you know, they hear homophobic comments. So there are all of these things that they're facing. Then there is also this thing of they're scared of saying that should we voice the fact that you know, that there is unconscious and conscious bias against us. Should we talk about the fact that there are no gender neutral toilets uh, in our office? Should we talk about the fact that our same sex partners do not receive the health benefits that the heterosexual people do? Uh, and uh, should we talk about the fact that, you know, we are not being given promotion for something that is not, you know, related to our qualifications? So all of these things are again, you know, as you can see, is actually there is this glass ceiling up there, even for the gay person. Now, normally when we are talking about glass ceiling, we only talk about uh, women and racial minorities. But the gay person's uh, the trajectory is also, you know, there is this huge glass ceiling with issues that the heterosexual person is completely very insensitive in many cases and unaware of. And obviously that leads to pressure, that leads to absenteeism. And you will see there is a lot of research showing that the LGBTQ person is not able to go up the you know, corporate ladder, not able to make uh, much uh, development in their work. So, so that is the situation as it stands. But of course, you know, uh, every dark cloud, as they say, has a silver lining and uh, our concluding uh, presenter, our team member Swati will actually talk about that silver lining. 
So thank you everyone. And now over to uh, Swati. Thank you, Anna, and thank you everybody from the team for explaining this, uh, the problems, the challenges faced by the LGBTQ so well. So hi everybody, I'm Swati and I'll be taking you through what we as individuals can do on our levels to make our queer peer a little bit better and make their lives a little bit better one day at a time. So now, as we all know, the challenges that are faced by the LGBTQ in various aspects of their lives, hence, let's look at, a, at the steps that we can take. So at the steps that we can take are, can be at various levels. It could be at the school level, it could be at the workplace levels. So let's discuss them first. At the school or the workplace levels, we can have uh, inclusion, uh, sensitization and acceptance workshops, promotion promotion of inclusive curriculums at school levels, which teaches the kids that uh, being an LGBTQ is okay. We can teach them the so what technique, which uh, Aparna, so, Aparna taught us in our second session. Uh, we could have an introductory buddy, a buddy program where they could have buddies at the school or at the workplace, they could go talk to when they are they feel that uh, you know they are not really being given the same opportunity as their other peers we could provide safe space to the cure to talk to confide within at the civil society level we could have lgbtq legal relief cells like we have for the women and child as we if we think upon why we have the women and child uh, relief cells are the reason being we need to provide them an equal opportunity, right? That was the prime reason why, why we had the women and child uh, relief cells and the funds that we are created that are created. And uh, time and again, uh, governments keep changing. They keep bringing women empowering uh, policies, right? So why not for the LGBTQ? They're an up and coming uh, and most recently being recognized. And uh, we should as uh, um, society provide them on the same pedestal as any other treat them ordinary but by providing them a little bit elevation by these promotion schemes by these uh, relief cells by such small small steps to talk about those there are many great initiatives which have already been taken by various organizations as well as our media and entertainment industry that have a great role to influence the decision making of our general population the general masses for example i am sure you must have seen the mainstream bollywood blockbusters that have recognized the voice around lgbtq and have beautifully depicted in a couple of blockbuster movies that have come over the decade which we can see here, uh, our very famous actor Ayushman Khurana, he himself has talked about it openly. And because of such initiatives taken by the uh, Bollywood industry, there have been many uh, conversations which have sparked in our households, which has helped a lot of queer folks talk to their parents, come up, come out of the wardrobe. And for the folks at the home to accept them and not take it as a taboo, so that has really created the space to talk. The Bollywood, the media industry, they've created a safe space to talk about it. Now, shifting our focus to the corporate sector, let's talk about a few outstanding organizations that have stood apart in providing inclusivity among the workforces. So, of course, due to the paucity of time, we cannot take all of them into consideration, but let's try. So first, we have Tata Steel, which have Leaf for New Parents. So new parents are irrespective. They could be of any gender whatsoever. They have diverse, diversion and inclusion programs running throughout. They have medical insurance coverage for all. We have Razor Pay in the list, which has insurance for all, irrespective of their orientations. We have Accenture, who sponsors global pride parades and global pride meets to create the level of awareness amongst the people about the LGBTQ. We have Godrej who offers medical insurance for employees wanting to get uh, gender uh, reassignment surgery. We have Lalit who provides scholarship for folks who want to study hospitality, who belong to the LGBTQ community in their uh, Lalit school, Lalit Suri hospitality school. Then we have Vipro as Kalpana nicely talked about. She explained how nicely Vipro has been handling the LGBTQ matters and has been uh, promoting that at every step of the way. With that being said, I would like to end on a famous quote by Barbara Chitings, a very well-known American lesbian LGBTQA activist. Equality means more than passing laws. 
the struggle is really won in the hearts and the minds of the community where it really counts. So we hope that with this presentation of ours, we were able to win the hearts and minds of our audience and hope that they in return will win that win others. And thereby our message of inclusion of includes message of inclusion of the LGBTQ will be a success.